In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use spread footing inside of Risa 3D. Uh, to do this, you'd have to have Risa Foot enabled on your program. Uh, you open up Risa Foot. It is a standalone program, but it can operate within Risa 3D as well. Um, so we'll be putting footings underneath these columns. In order to do that, first we'll can pop into the global parameters. If you have Risa Foot, you'll see this Risa Foot tab as the last option. And in here you can define the concrete information. You can tell the program to optimize for overturning, for check for concrete bearing, define the, the reinforcement. Uh, here we can see that we have the top bars listed as number threes. Let's switch those over to number fours. The bottom bars will switch over to number fours as well. You can change your pedestal bars. Uh, we'll maybe leave those as number three with the ties as number threes. Uh, you can also define the cover it listed here. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm also going to be able to have to define the footing definitions. So under Data Entry Toolbar, you'll see there's a footing definition spreadsheet. It starts out blank. Uh, to create a new footing, we can just push Enter. And there's a couple different options in here. If we expand this, we can see it further. We can tell the program that we are, are going to use the maximum length and the minimum length here. So the program will size ten, between 10 foot and 2 feet. Uh, the same thing will happen where here we have the maximum width versus the minimum width defined here. So it's going to size that. Uh, the length to width ratio increments. So it's going to be sizing that every half foot increment wise. Um, we also see here that the program will size the thickness based on design needs. So it will start at a maximum here of 24 inches and go down to 12 inches. Uh, we've got a thickness increment, so it's going to be sizing that thickness uh, every one foot, or excuse me, one inch we see. Uh, so it's going to go down by an inch every time it checks that. Um, the other thing you can do is set some information here. If we scroll these down a little bit, we can see we can orient it to the column. So if this column was rotated, that footing would also be rotated. We can also change things like orient, force it to be square. So if the program tries to go from a 10 to 10, it would also need to go to an 8 by 8, um, requiring that to be a square uh, footing. If we scroll down, we can also tell the program to be equal bar spacing. Um, so that allows the, the bars to be um, equally spaced uh, for so no banding. Uh, you also can tell the program here to group the design. For example, if we want both columns to have the same design, uh, we would tell it check the group, uh, group design checkbox. And then we can also say to force that they require there be top bars, even if they're not needed. Um, so for here, we'll call this, going to say this will be just footing 1. And then the second one we're going to do is going to just say footing 2. Now, if you want to force the footing to be a certain size and check that, we can do that as well. The way you do that is just by saying 5 by 5, for example, uh, minimum length and, and maximum length being 5 feet. Uh, we can also do it so it will be a square, a perfect square at 5 five feet by 5 feet. Um, that will check that program instead of being doing a design. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and open up the boundary conditions spreadsheet. And you'll see that there's a column called footing. And that last column, what you can do is tell the program to be footing 1 or footing 2. Those are the pulling up those definitions. Uh, the first one here we'll call footing 1, and the second one we'll call footing 2. And I scroll out of that, and I see that I get two types of footings, two different colors. They are based on the, d the footing definition. So now the last piece you have to do is just make sure that you set up your load combinations properly. In your basic load cases spreadsheet, you do need to have a category defined. So you'll see this column right here is called category. You do need to make sure you have a dead load or a live load or wind load. You cannot leave that blank when you're doing the, a design here uh, for a footing. And when you go over to the load combination spreadsheet, you can go ahead and define that. And you can tell the program this will be total load. And you can call it a dead load with a factor of 1 and live load with a factor of 1 or you can use the load combination generator. So if I go ahead and use the load combination generator, that's that button at the top. I can tell the program to use a strength design. Um, I'm going to tell the program just to use this for a uh, note. We are not including any roof live loads. Um, so I can generate, and that will use the strength design. And push close, and I see here I've got a several different load combinations created. Uh, the last thing before you leave the load combination spreadsheet is to go over to the design tab. And you have to have at least one service checkbox turned on for one load combination. So I'll just keep that first one as my service checkbox. Uh, when I go ahead now, I can say 
solve the batch and the envelope. It's going to require P delta analysis. That's okay. I'm going to keep going past that. And I'm going to close this down here and we can see some results. So the, we've got results for the total model. Uh, we can see we have total results, but we don't have footing results just yet. So we have joint reactions, we have all the results for the steel, uh, for the upper structure. But what we do need to do beyond that is solve the model one more time. Click on the solve button and say design footings. So we can say solve and as it goes through it's going to run the analysis for all the footings here and once it finds all those different checks that we go through and designs those footings, it's going to go ahead and give us a results here for the footings based on the spreadsheet. Um, so it's picking out a 2x2 two two for designed a 2x2 two two with a thickness of 12 inches on that first one. Since we forced the second one to be a 5x5, five five, it's doing that automatically forcing it to be a 5x5 five five. and you can see it goes through the steel requirements here, it goes into a footing code check and a shear check, uh, it goes to the pedestal and then we see the safety factors. The best way to examine this further though is to go to the detail report. So you can click on the top there detail report for current item and it will open up a detail report of the footing there. So it gives you a picture with the reinforcement plan here. Uh, scroll down below that you get the geometry um, and the materials that were used there. It gives us a loads. So these are the loads based on those load categories we mentioned earlier. And then it gives us a soil bearing check. Okay, and then we see below that we get more into the design. So we're looking at the footing flexural uh, bars for the bottom bars. We see the top bars listed. Um, if you see any red values, that means you're probably exceeding the value there. Uh, so we don't want to see red listed in our, our code checks, but uh, we see everything looks okay. Everything's blue. Um, so pedestal design, the pedestal is designed for us. And then here we have the concrete bearing check and the overturning check. Uh, below that, you also have your sliding check. Uh, you can review the the other uh, footing here just by closing this one down and then opening up our second footing and this one here was a check versus a design so the program is just going through and it's checking that one. So you can click on detail report and click on open that and you can see it's checking this detail report it gives us a check on that 5x5 design. And that's the conclusion to this video.